Good evening. Thanks so much for tuning in. Tonight, my thoughts turn to yet another year of life. For me, I've recently had a birthday. And every time I have one, it gives me a moment of reflection. I spend the month just contemplating what's happened over the year and successes and setbacks and things that I'd like to see different in the year to come. It's sort of my New Year's resolution, even though it's not the new year. It's my new life year. In the course of things, it's easy to get sort of stirred because there are many things that happen in life, but Every time I get near to my birthday, I start becoming more introspective. I spend some time on my birthday just alone in my thoughts. I considered where I had been and how far I'd come and where I was going to go. There are questions, I guess that everybody has to ask of themselves and maybe of those who are around them. But there were some things that I I came to a conclusion about. One of those things was that I was going to do nice things for people, not because I expected something in return, but just because it was a nice thing to do. It was a resolution because I think for many people who do things, they they expect something in return and they get disappointed. But if the act of doing something good is simply just doing something good, then you won't be disappointed. This year has been one of a tough nature. I decided to do some pruning in my life over the course of this year. And one of the things that I decided to prune was negative thinking. I used to wake up in the mornings and think about all the woe and how many things that I couldn't find right with my life and how many things I had yet to do and how many tasks I had yet to undertake or hadn't completed. And I spent a lot of time placing undue stress upon myself simply because I was trying to work through (coughs) emotions. And these goals, sometimes people wouldn't even know about them. I would just place them upon myself to continue pressing, pressing, pressing. And it wasn't worth it. I realized that I would have to prune certain negative thinking and set realistic goals. Goals that are actually beneficial to me. Not goals that will somehow garner the attention of others. Goals that will somehow affirm me before other people. Goals that really actually mean something to me. Taking ownership of my life in a way that was a little different than I had in the past. I decided to do a little pruning of my friends. I spent some time in deep contemplation because no one wants to build friendships and relationships that won't last. So I decided in the year leading up to my birthday that I would look long and hard at those relationships that were either sowing good things into my life or that were draining me of energies that I could be using to build good things in my life. I tell you, it's a tough decision to make. 
like an old shoe. It's very comfortable to be around the people who you've known for decades and decades and decades, but there's nothing going on there building you. You're just expending energy and nothing comes back. I remember thinking, how is it that so many hours could be devoted to conversation about thoughts and about ideas and about plans and encouragement. How many hours could be devoted to encouraging another human being to live their dreams, push for their goals, to strive for, to be the best? How many hours were wasted not reaching my goals, not reaching my dreams? not pursuing the happiness that can come from de devoted time and attention to the things that matter. Were those really friends? Or were those people who were in your life because you needed someone to bounce ideas off of? Are those really your friends? Are those people sowing good things into your life? Are those people actually building a life that makes you and them better. Psychiatrists and psychologists use a term called codependence. And I often wondered really what that meant because I, I, I didn't really study the psychological arts or uh, I, I just hear that term thrown around and from time to time I wonder when evaluating what I think it means, if perhaps I had some of those experiences, was I using the broken pieces of someone else to mend certain aspects of my life? Or was I giving away my pieces to help mend another broken person? This is a question we all must ask ourselves because what may seem like love and friendship may not be that at all. It might simply be that there's a void that's filled by that individual in your life. So what happens when you decide to purge or prune certain things from your life? Negative things thinking being number one and then number two is friends in quotes that don't really sow anything of benefit into your life friends that really aren't on the same journey you're on it's tough to let those go but the power and the decision to look towards the future and to begin the journey can open up some really wonderful things. But it means you have to step outside of your comfort zone. So, on my birthday, I, I did something that I would never typically do. Perhaps you can identify with this. I tend to be uh, less of a socialite. But this time I decided, you know what? I think I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone and make a bunch of new friends. New people who are doing things that I like to do. So I went to a poetry slam. <laughs> First poetry slam in my entire life. And I went and didn't know what to expect. But I sat there and was amazed at the literary prowess and the wordsmithing of those minds as they formulated their thoughts each one moving your emotions to a new place taking you someplace you never thought you could go the human experience linking minds and transporting us to new heights or new lows or emotional uh, places we never thought to tap. The interesting thing about poetry is that it is a 
set of contiguous words that convey ideas in a powerful, succinct way to communicate powerful emotions effectively, to transport your emotions in ways that you never even dreamt was possible. Bringing people into your own personal world and intimately allowing them to experience a moment in time with you, a moment of pain with you. I saw a piece of prose which said, poetry heals the mind. It's interesting that this concept had eluded me. I thought of poetry as a a young person is something more than a mere rhyme scheme. But I realized it was much more than that. That conveying ideas in a powerful way and utilizing words to create healing through the exploration of pain and different emotions, expressing the full dynamic of the human senses. This was a new thing. And while I was surrounded by all of these creatives, all of a sudden I remember this just became, I became overcome with just how at peace I was in this moment. I watched as these people bared their souls on a stage to an audience of listeners, raw how they shared their experiences of life and their pain and their agony and their, their, their highs and their lows in, in such powerful ways. Topics of their, of their drug addictions, topics including their broken and lost loves, problems with marriages, their broken hopes and dreams. But they were able to stand before people bare and naked and authentic. And that moment, I recognized that authenticity goes far beyond this how I dress and how I look and how I behave. Authenticity is being real enough to expose yourself in a way that allows people to learn something. Interestingly, up until this stepping out of my comfort zone experience, I had always identified with musicians, using lyrical prose to communicate emotions was something that I was familiar with, but I think lyrics sort of were much more difficult for me to to come by. I had to have some sort of powerful experience in my life to grasp a concept to want to emote through lyrics. But music and the creation of sound through instruments was always something pretty easy. I think, however, Watching these individuals communicate their emotions in a real and authentic way was some, somehow the key to unlocking something in me. Perhaps this process will unlock something in you. It isn't easy to be a real and authentic person. Not everybody likes everything about everyone else, but it is interesting how the power of a harnessed emotion can take you places. It can take those who are on a journey with you places. It's, it's interesting because over the past couple of weeks, I've been dealing with a variety of very, very, very tough circumstances. Some of them have even gotten me down a bit. Not, not so much that I uh, 